Hello and welcome to another digital marketing live stream hosted by myself, Dale Davies, on behalf of Exposure Ninja. And today we're going to be talking about TikTok and how you could be using TikTok to promote your business. That means promoting your brand, but also earning you uh, some more leads, some more sales. Who knows? Let's find out. I'm not going to be doing it on my own, uh, as always. I'm going to be doing these live streams with my uh, favorite digital marketing ninja, Joe Percival. Hello, Joe. Does I call you Joe Percival? You did call me Joe. That's a new one. That's a new okay. one. Um, great start. It's because in my mind, I'm thinking stream. about Joe Barlow, who was with us uh, <laughs> not long ago, who I miss he was dearly, indeed. clearly. Indeed, indeed. He does do a good live stream. Well, I'm not talking about web development or CRO today. I am, in fact, talking about TikTok and just short videos in general. Um, I know TikTok can sometimes be a scary buzzword for people who um, are like, that's an app for kids. I don't want to be on there. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is stuff that could be carried over to YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, which are also on Facebook now, or they're testing it on Facebook. So there's so many possibilities. TikTok really sort of took the stage in terms of that short form video. And now all the other platforms are like, gimme. I think Twitter tried it for a while and just realized it wasn't quite the right fit for them. But, um, you know, I think everybody is trying to compete. So, yeah, pretty, pretty exciting. <laughs> Well, this is your show. I'm going to hand over to you and jo uh, Jess, Joe. <laughs> you <laughs> go for it. Tell Marvelous. us all about TikTok marketing ideas any business can use. Excellent. While you queue up my wonderful video examples. So just before we get into the presentation, um, you can ask questions throughout and um, Dale will save them and then I'll be able to answer them at the end. No question is too silly, too big or too small. So um, please let me know what questions we have. And we are still giving away a free book. I wasn't sure if we were, so I didn't want to go in with that. But if you join the chat, you'll be in with a chance to win a copy of our book, How to Get to the Top of Google. You'll get a hard copy and um, that will be posted out to you. But if you do want a copy right now, you're impatient, you want an ebook, you can download it in the description down below. So let's get started talking about the type of people who are actually using TikTok. Because as I said, there's a bit of a preconceived idea that a lot of people using TikTok are kids. And that isn't totally wrong, but that isn't a bad thing either. And they're not the only people who are using TikTok. So TikTok has had 3 billion downloads in less than four years. It definitely had like a it had its time to shine during the pandemic. I think they probably <laughs> benefited from that. Um, but also they did have a rebrand back in about 2018, 2019 from Musical.ly to TikTok and really like reposition themselves as a short form video app rather than just an app for people to, I guess, kids to lip sync um, on. And obviously, as you can see, 3 billion downloads, it has worked. One third of all social media users have a TikTok account, which is like a very, very big number. And if you're wondering if they still use it, they have 1 billion monthly active users. 1 billion. I can tell you, I just spent an hour on it already today. And that was just now. <laughs> that doesn't include my morning or any of those other parts that I've spent um, on TikTok this past week. And yeah, as it says here, the average user spends 52 minutes on the app, which is quite a big number for social media as a whole. Um, and despite when you think about the videos can be between six seconds long to a minute some people do three minutes and they actually for some reason have a 10 minute video feature now um that's still a long time to be spending 52 minutes if they're all 15 seconds long on average or one minute long on average so that's that's pretty cool um and you can see here the the age of users on tiktok is probably the same as what you expect but there might be some surprises here so as we can see yes 10 to 19 is the biggest age group but 20 to 29 is really not that far behind and 30 to 39 and 40 to 49 aren't really that far behind that either so where you would probably expect to see like anybody over the age of 30 just absolutely plummet and not be on it they really are um and like i said as much as we're talking about tiktok today you've got to remember there's a lot of people on places like instagram youtube and Facebook who do have a similar short form video type system. So your audience is likely to be there in some form. Obviously, if you're targeting 50 plus or 40s, maybe it's not going to be, it might not 
be your number one platform, but it could still, you know, it could work into a campaign in the future. So of course my business won't fit. It's all dances and lip sync videos. And I always hear this in regards to TikTok and I am a bit of a champion for TikTok. And I feel like it has been put into this box that they're desperately trying to break out of. And they have sort of been given the chance to be the next Vine, but with, with bells on basically. So they do have a lot more to offer. And you'd be surprised at the type of businesses who are on there. So what type of businesses use TikTok? Some of our favorite examples that we talk about on the regular and who are household names. Oh no, not that one. We're not on that slide yet. Please ignore. <laughs> um, so here's some of the types of businesses that we see on TikTok that we love. And we're going to show you a few examples of their content today. So we have property advice and surveying, car detailing and cleaning, charities, law, like law firms or lawyers, clothing companies, museums and public spaces pool cleaning services, dentistry, vet services, and homeware. So I can imagine some of the stuff like homeware and clothing, you probably expected to see on this list. But I can nearly guarantee that some of these that you saw on here, you probably wouldn't have expected to see on this list and are probably wondering what type of content do they make? And it is all about how they found their niche and how they've tailored their content to that niche. And we'll be looking, like I said, a few example videos from each of these industries as we go. There's also quite a lot of household names on TikTok who are absolutely smashing the platform. Um, I mean, some of them for controversial reasons, some of them not, but they are still all sort of very, very popular on there. So we've got Ryanair, they do absolutely fantastic on TikTok. They've got 1.6 million followers. Duolingo, my great nemesis. <laughs> who has 4.2 million followers, Gymshark 3.6, Starbucks 1.8, LinkedIn who have over 100,000 and all of these companies make very different content. Ryanair and Duolingo you can definitely see that their audience is very much that kind of like younger millennial little bit edgy humor kind of vibe whereas like Gymshark really targets that fitness audience. LinkedIn of course is targeting LinkedIn targets a bunch of people and I regularly hear people say the link they look to LinkedIn's content on TikTok as inspiration for their own. I think even Gabrielle in the comments has actually said that previously as well. So yeah, if you're not sure where to get started and you want to look at household names, here are five that you can go with. But we are going to show you some less household names who are absolutely taking TikTok by storm. And we're going to use them as examples for a bunch of really great tips. So we're going to head on to those now. Um, but before that, we're going to start with some questions that I expect to get because I can already hear them coming. And I thought, why not answer them now <laughs> before um, everybody asks it in chat? And then I just end up answering at the end. So the number one question I expect to get is, Jess, how do I do this for my specific business? And basically, it's pretty simple. Spend some time on the app. Scroll through, search for hashtags related to your business and start building your personal for you page, training the TikTok algorithm to show you content related to your business. Look up businesses and brands that you respect, even if they're not in your industry, because like I said, companies like Ryanair and Gymshark and Duolingo <laughs> um, are really like finding their feet in this niche and creating stuff that you would never expect from them. Take notes during this webinar, get your pen and paper right now or open up your, your favorite note-taking app and take some notes. Cause I'm sure there'll be, there's gonna be a lot of names, a lot of, you know, people to look up afterwards and a lot of things to take into consideration. So you definitely, definitely want to be taking notes. And of course, brainstorm and write down everything, even the silly ideas and you know, even if you write something down, you're like, I could never envision myself recording that, or people are going to think I'm a bit silly for recording that. You can work backwards from that. What am I comfortable with recording? What would I feel okay with? And then work backwards from that. So there's definitely a lot of different stuff that you can do. So the number two question that I expect to get is how do I do this for my local business? So TikTok is obviously a like worldwide app. And as much as they say, you're more likely to see content from your country, I think it might be a little bit more to do with language because I do see a lot of American content as well, but it's very, very rare that I see content that 
isn't in English unless it's hit the few page of a bunch of English people who have left comments in English and then it ends up on mine, which are honest, which are usually like something along the lines of, I don't know what this means, but I feel it, you know, and that's how they end up on your few page. But most of the time it's fairly localized or lang you know, related to language, but that doesn't mean it's going to be local, local. You can't really target people on TikTok by, you know, town. So I would say use TikTok's global audience to see what actually works and what people enjoy. You can test out like different content types, tone of voice and branding. Like you'll definitely see with companies like Duolingo and Ryanair that they've definitely tried out a totally different tone of voice and some different branding on these accounts where they, it's like TikTok is like the opportunity for brands to be a little bit silly. And I think then they use that um to like influence their other strategies on other platforms so yeah it can help influence your more localized strategy and content on other platforms whether that be like facebook next door those kind of accounts I haven't seen that, that many businesses marketing on next door and when they do it's kind of blah so i definitely think there are some opportunities for that there as well so we're actually going to get into watching some cool videos now and just some general good times and good advice and ideas so Idea one is to take advantage of the everyday, which I know the ideas are going to sound vague, pals, and that's just, but we'll, we'll, I'll explain it. Don't worry. So what, what's the daily grind for you might actually be very, very interesting to your audience on TikTok. I often see behind the scenes of businesses, whether it's like packing my orders to send out on Etsy, almost get more views than the videos where they're just showing their products. You know, there's all these little things that to you, you're just like, well, nobody's going to want to see that. I do that every day. And then actually, it really helps people connect with you, what you're doing and understand the process. So people might come across your content while they're researching, like how to DIY something and then just hire you instead when they see how much work goes into it. We did actually touch on this in the YouTube um, webinar as well. But a lot of the examples I'm going to show you are companies who are just showing how they do a thing. And then you go, cool, I do not want to do that myself. Why don't I hire this person? I can already see that they do a good job by the content they're sharing. I'm just going to hire them instead. So first account that we have is Mad Detailing. Now, this video that we're about to show you has 2.2 million views and um, is literally just somebody cleaning a car. And Mad Detailing not only have a YouTube channel that they're making money from, that they're funneling traffic from YouTube, they also sell detailing, like, products now so you can clean your car yourself and as you can imagine they're going to be getting some like in-person traffic right they can't be global at this stage but they do have the opportunity for some in-person traffic from these types of videos as well dale roll the vt <laughs> And if you're wondering why videos like this are so popular on TikTok, we are going to get to that in a moment. So all he did was clean the seats. He didn't even clean the whole car. He just cleaned the seats. And to me, that was a very satisfying video that I enjoyed and made me think, maybe I need to clean my car as well. Maybe I need to take my car to a detailing company. Maybe I need to buy the products that he just used. Phil's saying, is that an industrial strength dentist? I suppose the process is quite similar, but, um, yeah, what, I mean, a little part of me was like, that video is quite boring, but I have watched a lot of mad detailing videos at this point. So maybe I'm just bored of car detail. Dave, what are you chuckling about? Oh, multiple things. I mean, uh, just well, some of the comments coming through is about industrial dentists and how it sounds, <laughs> but also the prospect of how businesses do have such a big opportunity to show what they're doing and that what might be boring to one person is very much this not the case of someone else. This like that video has like thing. thousands and thousands of views and it's somebody 2.2 million some views on that one video. Pongy seats. I mean, yeah. like it's impressive. It is. And, and there's so a clear audience for it. Absolutely. And what's really interesting about that as well is that people in the comments will be like, oh, are those the seats from that car that you showed us the other day that you've started to clean? Like, 
wild, absolutely wild. But yeah, very, very satisfying video and very, very much enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, on to the next TikTok account. So this next one is one of my favorites. I did bring them up in my um, YouTube webinar and that's the pool guy. I actually found out about the pool guy. Oh, Dale's saying hi to my, my very good friend, Alex. Um, we actually spoke about the pool guy in our YouTube uh, webinar, but I actually came across his content on TikTok. And as you can see, he has 13.1 million followers. He's actually based in the UK and he cleans pools, which I didn't even know there was this many pools in the UK. And I didn't know that they had so much maintenance. Um, and the video we are going to show you next has 9.6 million views and it's just pool cleaning. Sometimes he uploads videos which are just him pouring cleaning products into pools and they often get even more views than these videos. But I think this one's like six seconds maybe. But Dale, yeah, if you want to roll the clip for us. Alex saying they also enjoy the pool guy. Very much free. Look at that, how lovely. I could watch his videos for days, honestly. And again, like with the previous video, there's mm. no talking other than me. I mean, he might do his tagline again. bad talking over it, to be honest. I know, sorry. I just can't stop. There's probably some people get some really good ASMR out of this. Yeah. A lot of his videos, he does tag them with ASMR. But look how wonderful it looks. And in this step, as much as we're just saying about, oh, it's satisfying, he is showing, one, that he can fix this problem that you have, and two, he can do a good job <laughs> mm. in what looks like a fairly short and amount of time. And one-handed as well. This is Clearly the holding... This is uh, the <laughs> holding the, the camera with one hand <laughs> and the hose with the other. Absolutely. Talented. And something else that he does in his videos is he'll talk. He has a bit of a, please bear with, because I, I have a similar accent. But he has quite a common accent. So you can almost relate to him. It doesn't feel like you're in this elitist world of swimming pools, like you might feel like you are. And a lot of the people that he visits are just ordinary people who just so happen to have pools. Like one of his most famous pools was just like an old woman who needed a pool cleaned um, and it was just like really really sweet so he's connected with you on a personal level in the videos that he does talk and he always always ends his videos where he does talk saying holly your boy for the pool work and it just reminds you that if you do need pool work holler him get in touch get in contact with him and i mean at the moment he's probably making a bit more money from from social media now than he is from his pool work because he does have you know media slash commercial and he's got his agent in his description um because that's obviously bringing him more value right now but if you're a business you'll probably not use that i also i did notice some um questions and stuff in the chat which we will definitely come back to do not worry so if it feels like i'm ignoring you i promise i'm not um so on to the next one. Oh yeah i knew we were coming to this so the both of these accounts have something in common is that they are both accounts to do with cleaning and satisfying videos, right? And I'm not saying that you have to be a business that does cleaning or does a job that's satisfying. But number one, you'd be very surprised as to what people consider satisfying. Um, and number two, these both of these accounts have played into these huge train her trains trends on TikTok. So you can see that cleaning has 2.8 billion views, cleaning videos as a whole. Satisfying has 215 billion views. And so if you see that there's some kind of niche that relates in a vague way to your business, you can absolutely harness that. Like his, the pool guy, he could have made something, he could have gone after a totally different trend. He could have just shown beautiful, clean pools and gone for that aspirational vibe, but he didn't. He went for this cleaning trend, which I think is super, super like valuable and has done, just done fantastically. So I think we're on to idea two now, but, um, no, my track record so far. I don't seem to know what order the slides are in, which is quite good. Anyway, so idea two is to offer advice and show off your expertise. Now, TikTok might not necessarily feel like the right place for that, but I can absolutely guarantee you it is. I have learned so, so much from TikTok. Most of the time, just like I wasn't even looking for it. But there are people on TikTok who are looking for it. My younger sister, for instance, is an avid follower of BookTok, where she seeks out 
people giving reviews of books so she is a person who seeks out a certain type of content on tiktok and wants to look for the best books but for someone like me who isn't looking for that then i come across advice and expertise so like i'm going away this weekend i came across a video where somebody was like vacuum pack your clothes in um like food bags so i've like vacuum packed some of my clothes in like these little food packs and now they're all flat and great for travel so yeah it's just a really really great platform for learning and i think there's even a hashtag of learn on tiktok um and just a quick one at samir um i will be answering your questions at the end but my best advice is to take notes because there is advice throughout this for every single type of business it doesn't matter if you're a luxury brand drop shipping um dentistry i'm trying to think of some of the examples a bunch of different stuff basically there'll be advice here for you so either you help people with small problems and they come back to you as a client for big problems so this could be did you give them advice on how to clean their teeth properly and then they come back to you when they want to get dentistry work done did you advise them on how to rent a property and then they come back to you when they want to buy there's a bunch of different stuff and then the other option is you solve their problem but they'd rather hire you to do the work so it's almost a little bit similar to what we saw with the pool guy is that he's kind of showing you how to clean your pool but do you want to do it or do you want to hire this dude to do it for you so one example that we have here is the home buyer coach now the home buyer coach is a mortgage broker and he makes videos about buying homes um some of the content's very educational some of it's kind of more meme-ish so some of his more meme videos did get more views than the one i'm about to show you but i wanted to show you one that's like really really good advice um i just spotted in the chat that alex said there's a lawyer who gives really good tips i did write about her in my original blog which didn't make it into this um video i don't think um into this webinar because i just had too many people to talk about um but yeah we're going to watch a video by the home buyer coach now that is a super interactive way of showing you how you can um all the checklist that you need to do before you're buying a house and the the strategy that people tend to take instead dale roll vt <laughs> So that video, you can leave it TikTok, playing. Really. <laughs> if you leave it playing in the background, Dale, because I think people miss the beginning, but just mute it, I suppose. Um, so one thing that's really, really great about this video is it's so, so simple. Um, and yet it shows it's trying to think how to explain it best it shows it gives you a checklist first off it shows you things that you might not have thought about and it also is like most people do skip these steps and go straight to booking a viewing and the kind of people that he is appealing to are first-time buyers who haven't done this before so he's basically saying are you want these people you've missed all these things and certainly he's saying what else have you missed that i know that you don't maybe you should hire me or go to my website and download my all my checklists and all this stuff that I've got get you in my funnel. Um, and yeah, that's one reason why I really like his content. Also, he uses a trend, he used a stairs trend um, and tailored it to his content. Also he used a trending sound. Um, I don't know when this video was made, so I don't know if that sound was still trending, but it was to do with Squid Game. So it was a little bit of a while ago, but yeah, it was a trending sound to do with Squid Game, I think, something anyway, but he used a bunch of different things that made this video hit the trends and be popular and actually be useful. So the next example of advice and expertise that we have is Citizens Advice. Now, anyone in the UK probably has heard of Citizens Advice. If you're outside the UK, Citizens Advice is a charity that provides free, impartial and confidential advice. Excuse me. And um, basically, they the reason they're a bit vague there is because they cover a bunch of stuff. You need help with your landlord. You can go to Citizens Advice. You feel like you're being treated unfairly at work. You can go to Citizens Advice. So they cover a bunch of stuff. And being a charity that covers that many things, it could be quite hard to find a niche and find an audience. But I think they've absolutely nailed it by playing on trends while also being educational. So, Dale, if you want to line up the next VT. <laughs>
yeah, really, really good um, video. And I've seen a comment from um, Merlin who said, I follow them on TikTok. Great non-patronizing advice and content while also using trending sounds. This is exactly, exactly it. They've really established themselves in this industry as like approachable, you know, friendly, knowledgeable experts and they're giving out free advice so they're really ticking every single box and yeah like alex said i didn't know citizens advice had a tiktok but you did know who citizens advice is now i can guarantee you that my two younger sisters probably don't know who citizens advice is but these videos could pop up on their for you page and then they'd be like huh i'm thinking about i'm about to go to uni i wonder what things that they might have for me in terms of let's say they're at uni and they get charged with council tax or whatever you might learn about that on citizens advice that they're not meant to be paying council tax or just know that they can then direct people that need their help that need help from citizen advice to that so yeah they're, they're just really really cool and show how even if you are sort of a you don't have something to show you just have knowledge to share then you can you can do something you can do something with that um i mean can we so, just yeah, focus really on cool. like the camera angles it's somebody yeah. with their phone one direction and then the other direction like, yeah this is not anything that nobody watching can't do yes that is exactly That's exactly it's so basic they saw a trend and just ran with it and as i've said if anybody's starting to tune out because we're talking about tiktok this can be used on so many platforms like how many times recently have you seen vertical adverts on facebook or twitter or other places they're everywhere. You know, you can advertise in Instagram stories. You can advertise on Facebook stories, all these different places. So if you had a video that you test out on TikTok and found that it got really good reception and it's good quality, why not? What was the triple negative? Sorry, I just saw uh, Phil call me out on the triple negative. Um, but if your stuff is performing well on TikTok, why not put it on another platform and put some money behind it? Reach a new audience on the platforms that maybe don't have these, such an advanced algorithm as TikTok. So on to the next idea, I believe. Yes, idea three, handle fears and objections. And I picked out a couple of accounts for this, but I would say some of the accounts that we've already looked at, such as Pool Guy, such as Home Buyer Coach, have also already handled some fears and objections in their videos. Pool guy is handling the objection that he won't actually clean your pool because we saw that he did it. Home buyer coach is showing that he knows what he's talking about in his videos and that he understands your fears and knows the answer to them. So here's some ways that you can actually handle fears and objections on TikTok. One big one that I see a lot is, is there misinformation on TikTok or another short video, video platform itself? So unfortunately, the internet is the internet. And if somebody looks good in front of a camera and says the sky is green, people are like, huh, yeah, this attractive person on TikTok with a good camera and good lighting said, you know, the sky is green and then people just roll with it. And the amount of stuff that I've fallen for on TikTok that's misinformation and that other people have fallen for is huge. So you could be the person to get rid of that misinformation. Does your business include a common fear or concern? So for me, that could be stuff like going to the dentist is a bit scary. Um, so I would want to have my mind put at rest. I think the other example, I think here we've got a dentist as, as an example and a vet. And I know a lot of people get very stressed taking their pets to the vet and want to know how they can make that process easier. And there's so many things like we always say about ourselves at Exposure Ninja that we can sometimes be the first date after a bad breakup. We want to put those fears and concerns at rest and uh, make people feel comfortable in terms of their um, their marketing. So that's another thing. And can you cover objections in video form? So think about the kind of things that your audience might be worried about when using your business, for example, Phil. Maybe they're worried that they might um, get a bad translation service. Whereas you can put their mind at rest and be like, no, because here's how good my translation services are. Not necessarily the best example. But you're here, Phil. So I thought I would I thought I'd give you a little shout out there. <laughs> so there's some examples of how you can, you know, rest some fears and cover some objections in your videos. So the first one we have, I got in a rabbit hole. I always get in a rabbit hole with this chap every single time when I'm creating any work about TikTok because the content is so, so cute. But um, Dr. Tom is a vet on TikTok and he sort of specializes in helping 
pets who are really, really scared at the vet and showing how you can make animals more calm. And even though not everybody can go to him, I have seen videos where people have traveled to take their pets to him because they know they're going to have a good experience um, or that they've been like, oh my God, now I can take my dog to the vet and understand these are maybe some of the things I need to do. Oh, I realize I don't need to put a muzzle on my dog, stressing them out more. There's all these different things. Um, so we've got a very, very cute video coming up, Dale. If you want to roll, roll the VT. I mean, <laughs> hey, why are you got a muzzle on? on? It's very cute. Are you okay? Oh. Oh, bud. Oh, come here. It's okay. We're gonna be friends. Hey, I know you're nervous. It's okay. Can I, can I pet you? Is it okay? Huh? I know it's scary coming here. It's not always fun. This is quite a long one. It is quite a long one. I did say it's quite long. But, um, I, I mean, I can talk over it a bit and continue because we're already be half fun. an hour okay. in. Did you want to mute, to mute it down? We can let it play in the background yeah. while I chat about it. I can it. Just, just turn it on a little bit. So basically what oh, you'll see in this video oh, is that he is showing that, um, you know, he's really kind, friendly. He's also explaining what he's doing and why the dog is frightened and some of the things that he's going to do. You know, he takes the dog for a walk around. Um, I think he does that with this dog. Some of the, I've seen so many of his videos. Some of the videos he walks the dogs around to get some of their negative energy out. And he's just really kind. And I'm gonna be honest with you, some people in the comments are just like, he's attractive, that's why I watch the videos. I don't even care that he's there. I care to see the dogs be nice and then, you know, be happy at the end. Um, and that's just for me. But he's obviously, they start with, he wasn't in the videos as much. And then he realized that being in the videos was beneficial to his channel. Um, but yeah, you can see the dog at the end there is um, being really sweet and stuff. And so, like I said, it handles those fears that owners might have about taking their dog to the vet while potentially getting him business. And people are like, well, actually, I can travel a few hours to go see him because my dog's so stressed. Um, so yeah, really. Look how happy that dog is. I know, it's so cute. And the whole time it didn't even need the muzzle. But, you know, the dog associates the muzzle with being scared. And if the owner's put it on, knows it's about to go into a scary situation. So, loads of education from, from this. And look! <laughs> it's so happy. So, so cute. But yeah, there are some videos where the dogs are much more frightened, um, or like barking and stuff. And he did do some content about COVID puppies too, which people who have bought dogs during COVID who haven't had much socialization. So he's offering a bunch of different stuff here to do with his business and just to be nice and cute. <laughs> so yeah, that's him. Um, did you want to finish that video, Dale, or are you enjoying it? <laughs> we, we, no, no, we I was actually... <laughs> I was uh, queuing up another video for a little bit later. Hopefully, it'll be uh, useful. Um, oh, lovely! We shall come to that. It's Hopefully not. It's not an animal one. Right? Oh, animal such a one. shame! But it should be useful. Good, but like I said, what he's doing there is he's helping the vet community as a whole, um, while also helping get more business for himself because people are going to be like, "Well, I want to go see him because he's going to take care of my dog that gets so stressed every time it goes to the vet." So, super, super important there. The other person that we have to show you, um, who is a dentist, is I'm not. I'm going to absolutely butcher her name, so I'm going to call her Dr. Shardy, and um, stick with that for now. But she is a dentist in London, and as you can see from her bio, she does have her location, very helpful, and also book a virtual consultation to discuss your smile, which is fantastic. Because a lot of the people we've seen here, although they're indirectly getting business through their videos this is an example of somebody who is absolutely getting you know getting business through the app by linking to her virtual consultations and one of the ways that she uses the platform is she does well a few ways actually she does some education about how you should take care of your teeth she does some memes about how like you know when people come to the dentist and they say they floss every they've been flossing for the past six months and they haven't you know, all that kind of stuff, and even does some stuff where she's like cleaning her teeth using the equipment that she has at work. But something that she handles a lot, and something that I know full well has gained her backlinks and media features, is um, finding videos of people having bad dentistry treatment done, and then responding to that. So for example, 
I think the video that we've got next, sorry if you do not like teeth or people having dental procedures done, but it's somebody who's, who's going to have veneers done, but they're actually having all their teeth with these basically crowns on. It's not very pleasant. And yeah. one of the things that she does on TikTok is um, explain to people why this is a silly idea and what the alternatives are. So Del, if you want to play her, yeah. her video, it's is quite quiet, a, I think. Your content warning, you got three seconds. So one, <laughs> two, three, here they come. <laughs> you know the drill. Oh, I'm very no, much intended. <laughs> Look, I don't want to be that person who keeps recreating the same videos over and over again, but as long as these videos exist on TikTok and on the rest of the internet, I'm going to keep making videos like this so that people understand the damage that they're doing to their teeth. This is irreversible damage to your natural teeth. Shaving teeth down to pegs like that is going to damage the nerve and you're going to need a root canal treatment and extractions at some point in your life. Young patients doing this have a long life ahead of them and their teeth don't, essentially. So they're going to end up losing their teeth at a young age. Implants might not be an option either financially or physically. They might not have enough bone or there might be other contraindications, which means they can't have implants. And then dentists will be their only options at a young age. And it's just not worth it. In the majority of these cases, you have alternative solutions that are conservative of your natural tooth tissue. So consider those, please. No. <laughs> Change the change the screen for a moment, dear Lars. That is a yeah, swear. Please. Yeah, there we go. So um Sorry, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. That was my fault putting that video in. That's not her best video on the topic, but she posts quite regularly, and I couldn't go like far enough back with the time I had to find her more viral videos where she's a bit more quick to the point and a bit more like, that's damaging your teeth. Stop it. Here's what you should do instead. Um, that's just a more recent video that she's done that kind of shows you that she's still educating people on the topic and like she has great teeth her tiktok shows that she's like a doctor that she's a dentist so people who maybe were thinking about getting veneers and or they're not technically veneers what those people are getting those people call it that they will then go on her tiktok and find out more and i have seen comments on her videos before that say i was going to do this until i saw your video so that just shows even more how she's really establishing herself as like a really good person you might say oh but she's in london like you know i'm going to my local dentist some of these people in these videos these young people are going abroad to have these procedures done so they will happily go on a train to london to get another procedure done by a professional if they were already going to go to a different country to get this done they'll they'll travel a few hours to london we can hope we can hope um but yes that's two people who handle fears and objections really really well um idea 3.5 so this is a little bit similar to the rest of it but be a light in the dark so as i sort of mentioned before some industries have bad actors um whether that's like cowboy builders or terrible accountants or you know swindlers basically if that's common you can be the person who's like i'm not like that and here's why and also you can rebuild that trust so you're not only helping yourself you're helping the whole industry but of course if you're at the forefront of that people are more likely to come to you and so the next video we have is from one of my favorite favorite tiktok accounts new home quality control i can watch this do for hours i don't know what it is i don't know if it is a little bit satisfying to see these things um like being exposed and to be revealed um but basically what he does is he goes he's hired by new homeowners to go look at the quality of the new homes that they brought and he basically looks at everything that's wrong and then makes a list of it documents it and whatever's wrong gets put back to the builders and the housing association who made it i don't think that's what it's called but the company and then they have to repair it for free um and his account alone has 100 percent put me off ever buying a new build home um and if i was buying a new build i would um hire him <laughs> because the stuff that he's come out with is um is quite incredible so dale roll the clip also by alex i will see you in about five hours Yes, yeah, so a brand new property. We've got a massive in. amount of issues. So the ground level is too high to the air bricks. We should have a 75 millimeter gap between the air brick and the ground. Here we can see that we're uh, digging for treasure because this air brick was actually completely covered. 
Look at this. That's absolutely shocking. We've got a damaged air brick. Loads of the pointing's really poor. Look at this. You'd never spot that repair, would you? Shocking. We've got a random hole in this brick. Check out this garden, guys. It's like a desert. Look at this topsoil. Well, if you could even call it topsoil. Look, it's dry as anything. Hard as rock. Shocking. Look, bits of rubble. Nice. Good job, guys. I've just noticed that the guttering hasn't been connected properly. Look at that. We've got fixing covers missing along the top of the canopy. We've got a mastic seal missing along the top of the canopy. The weep vents above the front door are completely blocked with mortar, but they're not fake, so that's something, I guess. We've got a failed mastic seal under this windowsill. There's no fixings in this gutter outlet. We've got fixings missing to this gutter bracket. We've got no fixings in the gutter union. The protection on the soffit hasn't been removed. We've got some fractured mortar beds and joints left on the side of this window opening, but it's not loose, so that's one thing. We've got another gutter outlet with no fixings in it, and the downpipe's been cut and jointed incorrectly. Look at this. Shocking. We've got a couple of nails sticking through the fencing bearers. Look at this fence. Let's put a level on it. Oh my god, look at this. It's about two plums out of plum. Shocking. Let's test out the gate bolts. Yep, that's really good. Look how poorly these keeps have been finished. This is what it's supposed to look like. We've got numerous doors that aren't latching. That's really good. Uneven texture to the paintwork and walls in numerous areas. Numerous areas require patching. Look at this. The bath panel has been installed really poorly. Look at this. And we've got no fixings See, along the bottom. Long, What's really going on there? <laughs> this will really offend some of you Pretty joiners cool. out there. They've mastic sealed the handrail joints on the stairs. Ridiculous. The paint has been a bit cheeky and tried to get away with a little bit of work. Look at this. And the top of the architrave is damaged as well. Ooh, look at this. Cheeky little nail sticking under the base rail. Lovely. Love it. Oh, the security chain embedded into the wall. We've got a hole in the floor near the front door. We've got some water ingress from outside through the front door window. Look, you can see the drip. The protection hasn't been removed from above the patio doors. Lovely. And here's a quick tip. If you've moved into a new build property and you've got this style tap, unscrew your filter and check it for debris because it's always full of bits of plaster, bits of dust, bits of timber. Get that cleaned out. The cleaners should have done it before you moved in, really. But a lot of the time they don't. So that's absolutely grim. <laughs> it was a longer video, but I have to say I was a bit more engaged than the vet video for the, for the simple reason that the style that he has the opportunity to use here. So of course the vet needs to have that calm, relaxed vibe because he's showing us that he is a calm, relaxed person, that a calm, relaxed environment is good. This guy has taken the opposite approach and he's like, bam, 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 bam. Here's look how many different things are wrong with this house. Um, and he's constantly showing you, constantly showing you everything. And I'm watching this and thinking to myself, God, I would not buy a new build home without this guy looking at it because he knows what he's talking about. Look how much he's identified. Look how much money he is going to save me. And I know that he has like two branches. And honestly, I would, be, I think I would have him in even if it wasn't a new build, just to know what I needed to fix, you know? Um, but yeah, I just thought it was a good video. He has that little catchphrase as well. Like even Merlin said it in the chat, like the shocking thing. They knew right away you know who this was um so yeah just thought it was really really cracking person that's why i added this 3.5 because i wanted to include him i don't know if we had another person for this section sure we will find out in a moment but yeah really really good um really good content there no so on to my i think my favorite one now which is bring people into your world so there's a few ways to do this, and we are going to show you one account, which Dale and I love. I'm sad Alex isn't here, because Alex also loves this account. Um, but an account that, like, physically brings you into the world, and then another one who sort of does, but in a different way. So, the essence of this tip is show, don't tell. You can easily list the features of your product, but if you're not showing the benefits or explaining the benefits, people, you know, I don't really care that this Hoover has this much voltage and all this i just want to know if it can clean up dog hair so you know that's the kind of thing that you want to be thinking about show off your products your people and your services so some of the people that we've seen in these videos have great charisma great you know they love being in front of a camera or they built that skill over time so actually showing your people and showing what makes your business unique and individual to you can be hugely beneficial showing your services of course is great because it shows that you can do a job from start to finish. It shows your results, which is lovely. And of course, showing off your products just shows that they actually work. And of course, what makes your business different? Why should we go with you over everybody else? What adds that extra personal element to you? And I even know there's some people who 
just because they've attended our live streams a lot, I'm like, hey, if I needed that service, I'd probably go to them because I feel like I know them. And that's another thing that you can you can build a similar kind of vibe with um, with short video content. So this is a bit of a wild card. I'm not going to lie to you, but I see these accounts go viral all the time on TikTok, all the time. And this one in particular is called My Korean Home um, and they sell smart home products. And the whole premise of these videos is that they always show a young working woman coming home and cleaning her house using all these weird and bizarre products that either make something easier or just are a thing that you didn't even know you knew, like a sanitizing gun or a shoe sanitizer or a sanitizer you put in with your vegetables that like aerates them. There's all these different things. Um, and you'll notice if you ever go on any of these accounts, whenever anybody in the comments is like, oh my God, where did you get that? They're like, go to the link in my bio, you can buy it on my website. Um, and yeah, these videos are pretty, they're very addictive. They're a little bit tongue in cheek. And sometimes I'm going to be real. Some of the cultural elements, you might be like, oh, we wouldn't do that here. And that's just because it's a different culture. So just keep that in mind, um, with any, you know, any of these videos, just cultural differences. Roll the VT, Dale. I love these videos. I could watch them for hours. Absolutely hours. I saw a video talking this morning about um, how big the like the production teams are getting for these kinds of videos. I in bet. Parts of, like China and Korea. It doesn't surprise me. Yes. There's ones where they're walking down the hallway and it's snowing. Like, why is it snowing in the hallway? And then it gets shared because everybody's like, why is it snowing in the hallway? You know, all the like comments are snow. <laughs> Chinese e-commerce has like a big thing with this like live sale thing. So like it's done yes. by your phone and people could do it. That's it's becoming a big thing. I expect it's going to happen in Europe and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, North and South uh, America as well. But in it's China, it's like really tele-sales, isn't it? In a way. Yeah, exactly. It's like QVC, but just via TikTok yeah. or via Instagram yeah. Live or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if we see more companies doing it. But yes. in this case, yeah. Their teams are obviously dedicated to doing like the production kind of stuff. Yeah. Maybe it just started with just on the phone because a lot of this looks like it's yes. just done on the phone. But, oh, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the reason that's done is because, you know, they're often captured with what I do when I get home from work. And it's meant to make you feel like this is a normal person showing you these things and just showing you their routine. Like some of these, you know, she cleans the whole house top to bottom when she gets in from work, you know? But only and one of her just, hands. Yeah, only one of her hands because you're the one's holding the phone, of course. Um, it's still dirty then. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, and then you see these things like this shoe thing that she like changes the temperature on. I'm like, hang on a minute, I don't have one of those. Do I need that? Is that something I need? So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, don't put a message in the private chat that made me chuckle. Um, I realise that we've only got 10 minutes left, so I will try and speed things. At last time, I was too speedy. Um, so yeah, we will move on from my career at home and get on to my favourite, one of my favourite TikToks. Um, which is Black Country Living Museum. Now, I wanted to include these because me and Dale love them, but also just because they show how you can use people in your business to really be like, to show themselves and be themselves and build that connection, right? Because I didn't really care about this museum. I'm not going to lie to you. didn't even know it existed until my friends started sending me videos on TikTok being like, I love this museum. It's amazing. Um, and I love them. And as you can see, 1.3 million followers. If like 1% of their users went to the museum, that's ridiculous. That's loads of people. And so I'm, I'm not going to try and do maths this afternoon. Um, but that's a lot of people basically. And yeah, they're really good. They basically have a living set that they can use. But the reason I'm showing this to you isn't because I'm like, you need to have a living set, but it's just showing you that you can use what's around you to be creative and really bring people into your business. And I also want to show you because me and Dale just um, love them. So Dale, if you wanted to queue up the first video, yes, we're showing more than one, from the black country. The 19th yeah. century progressed, industry boomed in the black country and towns and cities grew and people flocked in from the countryside seeking work and accommodation. In the late 19th century, Britain became more powerful and more prosperous than ever before. But did everybody feel the benefit of this new prosperity? No! 
Here in the black country, life was still very hard for most people, especially in built-up areas where they lived in cramped back-to-back -back houses like this one. Imagine a family of eight living in a two-room house like this and like sharing an outside toilet with 15 other folks. It don't be thinking about, does it? So yeah, they're fantastic. And something else about that, yes, they have this set, yes, they have these actors, that is filmed on a phone. I can guarantee you that is filmed on a phone. Um, or, I mean, it's not the highest res, they've got other videos that are high, of a higher quality, but I would say that one was quite simply recorded. They've used a few TikTok transitions, and I have seen other parts of their content, which will be like jumping on trends, like making lunch for my kids, but it's like in, you know, the old days um and at the end of the day they're showing their product their product is their actors and their museum their living museum which all these buildings like taken from around the country and plonked here so that you can see them as they were um but are there ways that you can do this how can you show your product and connect with people on a character level and i do have a quote from them somewhere i think on the next slide which is People saying, why am I so emotionally attached to a museum? And then they said, why are we so emotionally attached to a social media channel? I think it's because they took a break over winter. And then when they came back, they gave all their characters Valentine's cards. Don't so didn't actually queue up that video. Um, but um, yeah, people just love them. People want to go. I want to go because of TikTok. You know, my friends want to go because of TikTok. I'm willing to travel three or four hours to go just for this experience because it's I want totally to see... The characters yeah but see and dale's recommendation is just from you know being able to visit it personally but i I've feel like, like i've four or five it times personally. it's amazing yeah. exactly I've, so uh, yeah, i've pretty well traveled i've been to a lot of museums uh like around <laughs> the world and i've got to say it's probably one of the best i've ever been to i'll probably yeah. be the number one yeah exactly really really fab um but they've really grabbed this platform and we'll actually see as well even though they are using you know, they're based in olden times, they almost break, they do trends without breaking character. It's so hard to like describe, but the video that we'll show you next is a perfect example of how they've jumped on a trend while being educational, while being in character, while promoting their museum. So yeah, Dale, if you want to um, show that clip, I've watched this so many times. Um... <laughs> But yeah, it's just a really cool video that plays on a current trend on TikTok that people like. It's really satisfying to watch and made me really happy. And I also enjoy that they are quite outspoken on TikTok. And if people, you know, there were some rude comments on this about women and they addressed them immediately and like stood up for women in the comments and made videos about them, you know, and they share a lot of stuff about history that people might not necessarily know about um, and use these characters to really sell it. And I just wanted to share because I thought they're really cool. Um, but yeah, back to the PowerPoint. I think Dale had another video, but I'm not sure where we are at with PowerPoint. So I think this was the last. Uh, one. I think that might have been the uh, the last I think that video. Was the last video yeah. There were some extra ones which uh, we were considering putting on, but uh, decided not to. <laughs> no, that's another thing that I am going to say about this museum is that they saw the type of content or the type of characters that got a response, and then have played to that and also said, do you want to meet this character in real life and have this experience in real life? You can. And I think that's pretty Im like important. They've really, really connected with the audience. Yeah, there's this one guy, there's this one guy with the cane and people really, really like him. <laughs> and they have absolutely played on this so, so, so well. And that's another thing. P your audience responds to something, you can double down for sure. You can double down, but yeah, there we go. That's Black Country Museum. Back to the last few pages of the PowerPoint. There we go. So an, a roundup of the ideas. So if you weren't taking notes, despicable, you can grab them from here. So take advantage of the everyday. What do you do every day that might be satisfying, interesting, or unique? You can share it in a short video. Fantastic. You can keep people's entertainment. You can show them something satisfying. All good. Offer advice and expertise, which is also super, super important and show that you are an expert. 
handle fears and objections, you can do this in video form. You can be the light in the dark and make people feel at ease so they'll want to come to you if they're scared of the dentist, scared of going to the hairdressers. I do know people who are like that. All this good stuff. And bring people into your world. Why not? It's almost similar to the everyday. But if you have people in your company who you're like, every time I work with that person, they're hilarious and they bring a smile to my face, put them on camera. Absolutely wonderful. So we're going to go through some questions and answers now. So now's a great time to ask some questions. I know some people already have. Um, and of course, anybody who leaves a comment on any platform will be entered into a giveaway for a chance to win the copy of a book, How to Get to the Top of Google. But if you can't wait that long, have a look in the description down below and you can download a copy. So yeah, Dell would like to share something with us. Yeah, so I was looking earlier for another example of um, someone who has taken uh, the social media presence that they've earned and they're not only getting extra business for it, but they're also creating other revenue streams as well. Now, uh, Yanimize is a YouTube channel that's been going for a couple of years. They started small and they've scaled up to the point where they have like four or five people working on their YouTube channel and social media channels all the time. And they have like huge, huge videos. Like uh, the, the views are actually massive. Uh, they've got 1.9 um, million subscribers on YouTube. They have you know videos with uh, a Bamiyang's you know uh, Urus car and all this kind of stuff. They they do the same kind of thing over on uh, TikTok as well. So they've got 457,000 followers, five million likes. What they're doing as well as getting more customers coming into the shop to have like custom wraps and stuff like that they've actually now launched their own product range as well so you can get um the animize um car cleaning products or something like that which has now been launched in halfords um wow yeah so this all starts with just putting anything out there like their first videos are not incredible um that you know just somebody with a camera going around the garage and just showing how things work and now and now you've got uh, yeah, eight years ago, well, that's people going back and watching them, but the quality is just not great. No. But any, you know, I mean, literally anyone could do it. It's just a case of understanding what people want to see and knowing how to pay stuff, how to do a little bit of storytelling. But if you own a business and you know how to sell your product or your services, you're a storyteller. You just probably haven't realized it yet. Um, yes. And then, yeah, no, you totally end up with like agree. 10 million views doing KSI's purple Lamborghini, maybe. Who knows? This um, is the thing. This is yeah. the thing. And one of the reasons why we've shown you not only ordinary businesses, like the everyday, but also some of the a bit more out there, like Black Country Museum, is just to show you the breadth of content that is out there on TikTok. Um, I did actually see, before I get to questions, I did see... Um, Rihanna comment and say lots of great ideas today. Haven't really known what to use TikTok for. Having a kids story podcast. So this session has given me loads of avenues to try out. So in terms of kids stories on, yeah, in, in terms of kids stories on TikTok, I regularly come across content and people reading kids books just out loud and flipping the pages. I've seen lots of content showing kids books that are really diverse and that teach kids about stuff that I would have never even known there was books about. I've seen people wrapping kids storybooks like dr seuss that kind of thing and they'll go through the pages and rap you know there's so much that you can do with content like that so um you yep. know if you're trying to reach parents you can create funny content for parents it's like how cbb's have celebrities to read the bedtime stories and had like harry styles i would not know anything about the cbb's bedtime story but my mum and my sister talk non-stop about harry styles reading that bedtime story so i know about it so there's so many yeah. different I mean, things that you can do. I would say like 40% of the video consumption that my daughter has is two. Um, those videos are people reading out books that we just don't have. So it'll be yes. just on YouTube and just, you know, showing you the pages and reading them to you like um, Little People, Big Dreams. There's like a whole bunch of the collection we don't have. So people, she just watches uh, people reading that. And you know, they've got a lot of views on those videos. Um, and Absolutely. as you said, Jess, there's, or Joe, um, there's a, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of ideas that you can do. Like a lot of ideas. I tell you more about the background of the people. Um, like parenting TikTok, parenting Instagram Reels, stuff like that is huge, huge. Yes. Um, um, so we're just going to go back to one of the questions. So we're just going to cover yeah. questions as yes, yeah, just yeah. pointed out. Um, Samir was asking how he could, um, a luxury brand use TikTok. Yeah. FOMO, the fear yes, of missing out. 100%. Show off 
yeah show off what people are missing out on like there's all this kind of stuff sometimes the aggregate channels where they're just showing off other people's stuff or they're just yeah. going from one place to the next and just like showing you how great this this particular uh, thing is like an item or like your yeah, hotels or like if we just open some of these i don't know if the volume yeah. is going to come through or not but just you can either do it for yourself and just show off your location if you, you have a location or your products or get influencers involved and have them show off your location so let's say you sell a product so the one this is one of the uh, the ones that's got like 21 million plays um it's, it's a fair bit old it's like a year old now but still keeps this brand relevant um people yeah. love to watch this kind of stuff like if you could show how your products are made in any way or give a bit of background information or as for all the examples that Jess has showed today, what might be boring for you is actually really interesting for somebody yeah. else. Um, Absolutely. Including washing really dirty car seats. Like really yeah. anything is possible. You just have to think a little bit outside the box, perhaps. Yeah, totally agree. Like even looking at this jewelry now, like one of the holes that I get in sometimes on TikTok is like when people ionize metal and they'll like throw it in this tub and then it changes color. And I'm like, whoa, you know, but <laughs> this video alone is like, it's not just a ring anymore. It's a luxury ring that somebody has handmade. And, you know, it just adds an extra level. I think there was also back on the tag, there was like um, something, something yacht edition. And I know that there's a lot of trends that like things on my something that just makes sense. Okay, no, I'm not sure that it is. Um, oh, so yeah, it's, it's just Daniel a Mac. Oh, uh, okay, okay. We'll ignore that so Dan like... Daniel Mack is somebody who goes up to people who owns expensive cars and asks oh, them, what do you do for a living? Like trying I to see. find out um, how they can afford such nice cars and has done like a yacht version a couple of times. Um, but that's the thing, if you own a luxury black hair brand and you have people, customers who are open to being on camera, ask them what they do for a living. Why do you have a yacht? What do you use it for? What's the purpose? Do you have parties? Do you use it just because you want quiet time? Do you love being out on the ocean? Did you always want a yacht growing up? You know, there's so much that you can do. Um, so, yeah. Endless possibilities. This luxury brands. It's like a, an estate agent or something, like, a, you know, housing accounts, clearly. Amazing mm -hmm. home, uh, felling is selling. Okay, cool. Uh, they've got 60 million views on this house. <laughs> yeah. They've got 152,000 followers. They're just showing you around the house. Like, yeah really it's, so case, it's, it's that simple just show people um like tim's so um our founder tim has got a, an account he does on the side just you know for fun um and you know includes his family within it his one of his like popped off the other day and has gone from like 2000 uh, views for when we won the uk paid media awards the other week to 42,000 views for this just him talking to the camera whilst refilling yeah. the bottle yeah we've all we can all refill bottles and talk at the same time that reminds me of like another account which is not related directly to like services but is um somebody called the korean vegan um mm -hmm. let's see korean no worries jamie thanks for being here glad you enjoyed it yeah absolutely thanks ever so much for being a, a part of it today um yeah Have, yeah the whole thing is like it's really great good. to see the food but what actually keeps people coming back is the story so look yeah. at the hashtag story time they're talking about like their life or the background information about like how they're running the business and it's the same for lots of these like the pool guy and all these people they're just talking about their mm -hmm. life they don't you don't have to be you know um you're not like Charlie Chaplin detailing like the perfect story with all these like intricate moments. You're not you know doing it like a Tarantino video. <laughs> yeah. Just, just be you and talk uh, your customer's language. Like yeah. Just yeah. Make it real. That's what people want from uh, social media channels. They want reality. Sometimes they want FOMO, like with luxury. They want to see what they're missing out on. But they also want a connection and a bond. And that's what uh, people are um, tuning in for, for this video in particular. Absolutely. And just another example as well for my own personal account. Dale will laugh at this because mm. it winds me up. But I have a spider catcher, which is like a stick that oh, yeah. has a thing on the end and you can pick up spiders with it right and i've posted a lot of videos day or so you're gonna have to work a little bit to find it but it's fine and it is literally i sent it to a partner on on like whatsapp to be like look at my spider catcher it's marvelous yeah there it is 147,000 views. views 
<laughs> and all I do is this. And the comments are like, where's the spider? <laughs> the where spider catch a sponsor where? Don't try and sell me this. Oh. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't I forgot about that. At all. But it just it popped off because it's just me talking about my spider catch and being like, this is so useful. Like, you know, but there's people who are like um in the comments like, I'm not gonna buy it. And I'm like, I'm not even trying to sell it. I'm not even trying to sell it. Um or people being like, Where did you get it? And I'm just like, just search spider. Twenty thousand likes. That's phenomenal. No, Five hundred and eighteen comments. See? Because people tagged each other you in it. So much. Tagged people who right. were scared of spiders, which is like 90% of <clears> the population. I mean, I <laughs> use it to catch wasps in midair as well. I think I was talking about that in the video. But yeah, this is the thing. It's just every day. Like I've got a plaster on my finger. I haven't tidied my... That was when I lived with my mum. I haven't tidied that room. It's a mess. Lighting's terrible because I've got my <laughs> sunset lamp on, but the light's on. Like it wasn't intended to see the light of day. I put it on TikTok just because I thought it was funny. And there we go. But yeah, we're going to do the prize draw now because we've gone a little bit over, but I'm in, not in, in too much yeah. of a rush. Really. If you you do win today, if your name comes up and you want a copy of How to Get to the Top of Google, Phil, you've got one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you want a copy of How to Get to the Top of Google, which is uh, on... Somewhere. This is the old version. <laughs> Chase, Chase Gordon, Gordon, if you want a copy, Lovely. Uh, just email me Dale at Explosion Ninja with your personal address and the contact phone number, and I'll make sure that gets e emailed uh, emailed out, <laughs> posted, physically posted Same out. Same, indeed. Yes. Um, but yeah, uh, just up absolutely super. Thank you ever so much for sharing this all, uh, with us. It's been a lot of fun. I enjoyed um, posting it. <laughs> what have you got coming up for us next week? Well, video content wise, content wise, we have the biggest most mammoth, most comprehensive Google Analytics 4 guide that you've ever seen. Now, I think it's good, but I'm now having the panic that I sent it to Dale for review, and I'm worried he's going to say this is a state. <laughs> but I think it's because I've been looking at it for so good many happen. days. But if you're struggling with Google Analytics 4, I want to learn about it. It's going to be in that guide. Video-wise, we have a video coming out on Monday about buyer personas. It's going to be an absolute corker. Um, it's one of the best videos I think we've created, just in terms of the content that's being shared, Tim's energy is on point, our editor's editing is marvellous, the graphics are good, like we're absolutely thriving. Um, we also have a fix or rebuild stream on Wednesday, and I don't know what we're doing on Friday. Yes, that's the video that is going live soon. So make sure that you are subscribed to our main YouTube channel and that you're subscribed to this one, which is our live video channel as well. If you're on the live channel, I think we might be live streaming to both YouTubes right now, I'm not really sure. Um, but hit yeah, like I added the other one in. Ah, got you. Hit like on the video and also subscribe on all of our channels because we put out amazing content um, two to three times a week, double live streams a week, at least one full video a week with actionable marketing advice for anyone. Absolutely. Um, That's that. I'm just trying <laughs> to figure out if there is a stream next week or not. I don't think there is. It's really? Like upcoming. Yeah. Is it always oh, is it, is it a holiday? Jubilee next week? Yeah, it's a bank holiday, yeah. so we're not streaming. We're gonna yeah. no no stream next week, uh, so that everyone sure. can have some uh, much deserved time off. Uh, nothing to do with uh, anybody having uh, any kind of jubilee or anything. No, me and Dan are actually both working that day, so maybe we'll yeah. <laughs> just rock up and do a stream Either. and just talk to each other about random. Yeah, stuff. let's do that instead. <laughs> if uh, <laughs> if yeah. enough people if enough people email us and say please stream instead, then we will stream instead. Yes. Otherwise, if you want the we'll excuse to get out of jubilee to... celebrations, we will probably absolutely. Stream where we'll just talk about marketing. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. What video are we going to suggest, Jess? What video are we going to suggest? Um, yeah, for the end, for the people watching us on the replay who can uh, hit the old end screen button. It will be a video with lots of good information from Exposure well, It could be any of our videos. <laughs> I mean, all great. I don't know what, which one wants to promote. What was last week's okay. video? Can't last week's video was about reducing your call to, uh, cost per acquisition by up to 87%. So you can watch that, that video by going over here, this over video right here. here. Click that one. <laughs> Go. If you're on the replay, okay. disco outro. Yeah. Right. Cool. Click this video. See you in a bit, everyone.